Early scholars who studied the Mayu believed them to be a Pacific people who rarely warred among themselves. These scholars were impressed by the intellectual achievements of the culture, which included extensive trade routes, a written language, advanced astronomy and mathematics and an impressively accurate calendar. Recent research, however, shows that the Maya were, in fact, a tough, warlike people who frequently warred among themselves. It is quite likely that this constant warfare was an important factor in their sudden and mysterious decline. It is also now evident that, like their later neighbors the Aztecs, the Maya regularly practiced human sacrifice. Far to the north, the Aztecs would become famous for holding their victims down on top of temples and cutting out their hearts, offering the still-beating organs to their gods. The Maya did cut the hearts out of their victims, as can be seen in certain images surviving at the Piedras Negras historical site. However, it was much more common for them to decapitate or disembowel their sacrificial victims, or else tie them up and push them down the stone stairs of their temples. The methods had much to do with who was being sacrificed and for what purpose. Prisoners of war were usually disemboweled. When the sacrifice was religiously linked to the ball game, the prisoners were more likely to be decapitated or pushed down the stairs. To the Maya, death and sacrifice were spiritually linked to the concepts of creation and rebirth. In the Papal view, the sacred book of the Maya, the hero twins who Nguyen's Balink must journey to the underworld, that is die, before they can be reborn into the world above. In another section of the same book, the god Tahil asks for human sacrifice in exchange for fire. A series of glyphs deciphered at the Yaxcalan archaeological site links the concept of beheading to the notion of creation or awakening. Sacrifices often mark the beginning of a new era, this could be the ascension of a new king or the beginning of a new calendar cycle. These sacrifices, meant to aid in the rebirth and renewal of the harvest and life cycles, were often carried out by priests and or nobles, especially the king. Children were sometimes used as sacrificial victims at such times. For the Maya, human sacrifices were associated with the ball game, the ball game, in which a hard rubber ball was knocked around by players mostly using their hips, often had religious, symbolic, or spiritual meaning. Maya images show a clear connection between the ball and decapitated heads, the balls were even sometimes made from skulls. Sometimes, a ball game would be a sort of continuation of a victorious battle, captive warriors from the vanquished tribe or city-state would be forced to play and then sacrificed afterwards. A famous image carved in stone at Chickensa shows a victorious ball player holding aloft the decapitated head of the opposing team leader. Captive kings and rulers were often highly prized sacrifices. In another carving from Yaxcalan, a local ruler, Bird Jaguar IV, plays the ball game in full gear while Black Deer, a captured rival chieftain, bounces down a nearby stairway in the form of a ball. It is likely that the captive was sacrificed by being tied up and pushed down the stairs of a temple as part of a ceremony involving the ball game. In 738 AD, a war party from Quiriga captured the king of rival city-state Copan, the captive king was ritually sacrificed. Another aspect of Mayu blood sacrifice involved ritual bloodletting. In the Papal view, the first Maya pierce their skin to offer blood to the god Stahil, of Ilix, and the Cavits. Maya kings and lords would pierce their flesh, generally genitals, lips, ears or tongues, with sharp objects such as stingray spines. Such spines are often found in tombs of Maya royalty. Maya nobles were considered semi-divine, and the blood of kings was an important part of certain Maya rituals, often those involving agriculture. Not only male nobles but females as well took part in ritual bloodletting. Royal blood offerings were smeared on idols or dripped onto bark paper which was then burned, the rising smoke could open a gateway of sorts between the worlds.